Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. I have given many episodes here on C++ Weekly that talk about lambdas. And in this episode, I would like to take a little bit of a step back and actually describe what a lambda is so that those episodes effectively make more sense. And so you could watch this one first and then go back and watch the previous ones. So to reason about this, I am going to demonstrate a lambda, and then I'm going to show the equivalent version if I were to create my own thing that the compiler is doing for me. So this is our classic return 5 lambda. And I've done things like this a million times in previous episodes. But I'm returning 5. I am calling the lambda here. And we can see that 5 is being returned. What is a lambda exactly? We can attempt to ask the compiler about this with something like this. We can say, what is the name of this thing? And we can see the mangled name here is Z4 main E3 dollar sign underscore zero. So this is a new type that was created for us, that the compiler created for us with some name that we're not allowed to know. It is an unknowable name. It is, though, something that we can reason about. And it's something like this. Some sort of struct that is the zeroth lambda that was created inside of main. Now, I started with this double underscore here, and that is because this is the kind of thing that the compiler does. The compiler has reserved for itself identifiers that start with an underscore, and so it is going to take advantage of that. It knows that it can create this name that legally our code is not allowed to uh, conflict with. We are not allowed to define our own identifiers to start with an underscore, so this is the kind of thing that the compiler would do. Now, LAM does use auto return type deduction, and they have an operator paren defined, and by default, this operator paren is const. So this lambda is the logical equivalent to the one that we have defined right here. Now, if we give this lambda a parameter, like this, it is the same as if we had created a parameter here to our lambda, and we do something like this here. And we need to make sure that we call our lambda with a value, so now we should be getting 8 returned from main. This is const, I mentioned this. It is, as far as I know, the only thing in the standard that is by default const. So this has an important implication. If we add a capture, and again, I'm going to give it this double underscore name, something like this, and we are to create our own local value here and assign it to 10, and then we're capturing this val. And we want to add this val to the summation, and we can add our val to the summation here. Actually, I should get rid of this double underscore to keep the equivalence the same. So something like this. Now, in this case, we now have to think about the construction of our lambda. So this auto L here on line 15 is kind of like doing this. So we are initializing our val with whatever the local value is. Now, if we wanted to mutate this val here, we can't. We can't, and it is obvious because our call operator is const. So with a lambda, we need to actually add the mutable keyword here. And what mutable accomplishes is actually removing the const keyword from our operator paren. And similarly to this, if we were to make this parameter i auto, this has now become a generic lambda, and we need to create our equivalent thing to have a template. So by creating a generic lambda, we have implicitly created a template function. There's lots of shorthand going on here in lambdas and the kinds of things that it creates for us. And there is one key thing that I have left out. As of C++ 17, this operator paren is automatically const expr if it can be. So it's automatic return type deduction, automatically const expr, and const by default, which is 
an awful lot of the things that we want in our regular C++ code, plus it gives us a shorthand for creating templates. So that, in a nutshell, is effectively what a lambda is. And since this is just a type that we can reason about, this is why we can do things like inherit from lambdas. And I'm going to talk more about inheriting from lambdas actually in the next episode, even though this seems like something that I've really talked about a lot. I want to refine the concepts that we've talked about in the past. And of course, always remember to use the tools that are out there. We can see here that if we use CPP Insights website and put in this example and tell it to show us the equivalence here, we get something very similar to what I demonstrated. Now, this version stamped out exactly one version of the call operator instead of making a template for us, um, which is effectively what the compiler would have done because we've called it with only exactly one type. So it made it an int version here, but effectively the compiler did have to make a templated version and it created a constructor for us, which I'm not sure if that was necessarily required or not, but we have basically the same thing created here. So be sure to use CPP Insights, play with this, and learn what your compiler is actually doing for you under the hoods, and gain a better understanding as to what is going on. So thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe and give this a like, and I hope this explanation was clear and useful to you.